Hello, uh, welcome back to my studio. I'm artist and author Mark Heine from Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. And uh, this is the third uh, <clears throat> video in my Elements of Painting series. Um, welcome back and I um, uh, hope you enjoy it. Uh, we're gonna get right over to the video here. Uh, <clears throat> let me just do a screen share. Uh, and okay, this is where we left off uh, on the last video. Uh, I explained uh, how uh, 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 important I think uh, the the series is in terms of a working method and keeping your options open uh, as far as being able to uh, change your direction in painting without uh, upsetting your your galleries or your client base. Uh, check out the end of uh, video number two if you want to hear that rant. <laughs> uh, okay, let's get uh, started here. So uh, <clears throat> this series here, I thought I'd explain a little bit about uh, how I came to where I'm working now and, uh, and came to formulate the passion that drives my work at this time. And uh, so when I finished uh, my career as, a, as an illustrator, uh, I <clears throat> was was trying to figure out what direction I wanted to move in in terms of gallery uh, painting. And uh, I wasn't really sure. Uh, I had enough time to think about it, but really hadn't come to any conclusions. But I'd done some figurative painting work previously, uh, you know, um, in my spare time. And, and uh, I'd taken a series of photographs of my kids playing at the beach on a camping trip that we did uh years ago and i remember thinking to myself when i took the photos that the the lighting and and the colors were so great in the in the images that i i uh i thought i to myself i gotta paint these someday so anyway I, I remembered that and i went back and i found these old photographs and i started doing some paintings of my daughters uh playing at the beach and uh, and so oddly enough the series the first few were called sirens uh, which have no relationship to the sirens I'm painting now, uh, but in a way they do because it's kind of coming back full full loop to where I started my figurative and fine art painting career. But so uh, I did these series of of uh, uh, paintings of the girls at the beach. At the time, I was experimenting with materials, so this is uh, uh, acrylic. Uh, I'm not into the oils yet. Uh, and uh, and that's how I started in on figurative work. So I uh, I had a show uh, called At Play. It was my first uh, show. You can see over here I'm on the cover of uh, Focus magazine for the month. And uh, I had a show called At Play, and and the double meaning for the title was it was the kids certainly at play, but it was also uh my returning to having fun with painting and and playing with painting uh now retired from my my illustration uh, uh business uh i found in over the years that um that you had to really tell people what you wanted and uh and you couldn't be a part-time illustrator part-time fine artist they want people want to put you in one place or the other and if they don't have a clear path of where to place you they don't place you at all so i stopped doing the illustration work and put that aside and 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 devoted myself strictly to fine art and for this show uh the gallery owner said to me because these paintings were all paintings a little anecdotes of of what the kids were doing a uh, little anecdotes of of uh, my past and my growing up childhood experiences. And so the gallery owner said, well, can you write a little kind of note that talks about the painting, what's happening in the painting, so that when customers come in, the gallery workers have something that they can point to to explain, or, or maybe they could read them and explain to people what the paintings were about. And so I started writing these back labels and I really quite enjoyed the process. I hadn't done any writing before. So I, I really quite enjoyed the process of writing these back labels and what was happening in the, in the paintings and how they related to my life and my, my family and my parenting, things like that. So the at play show um, 
uh, was the beginning of of my writing. And at the same time, uh, I my daughter Charlotte uh, had worked a lot with the Queen Alexander Foundation for Children, uh, and uh, so I did a print. Uh, I I did a painting and created a print, and we sold the print. Uh, to do fundraising for the Queen Alexander Foundation. Uh, it was a good thing to do, uh, but also too, it worked good for me because the Queen Alexander Foundation has a huge mailing list of people that that sponsor and, and fund this, this organization for, for kids with disabilities. And so they, um, uh, you know, they, they helped promote the show and a bunch of their people came out. We made some money uh, for the Queen Alexander Foundation. So, connecting with a a, 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 a a charity and and um i do that for each show i i try to have a a charitable organization that benefits from the show and i benefit from their uh from their uh members and it all really works out and it's a good thing to do so i i keep that in mind if you're uh if you're planning a show uh like i said i like to have my shows be as cohesive as as possible so there's a common theme and uh, and, and there's a, a, a common uh charitable uh, uh organization that that benefits and and uh, and that's been a theme that i've developed uh from the very first show so uh that was uh my my first experience and and showing and and then i i had a, uh, my next painting show was a, a show called elements of nature and it was a similar kind of theme it was the kids but now my kids were interacting in the natural environment and how the the uh, elements of the natural environment, the the traditional elements of earth, wind, fire, and water, uh, were reflected in the art. Was the concept uh, uh, all about enjoying the lifestyle of the West Coast and the natural beauty of of the coast? So that became the theme for for elements of nature oh and here again uh like i said i i like to get involved with the uh philanthropic groups i was the the um honorary spokesman for the for the cnib i appeal last year and these things are all really good in terms of helping to fund these important causes and also uh to build your uh uh reputation with with uh with people in your community so definitely think about uh something like that if you're if you're planning a show there, there's benefits for everybody so here's really kind of we're getting down to to some of the first things uh when it comes to this uh elements of, of painting of course composition uh is is huge uh, composition is the design of the painting uh, and um, and how you need to think about it. Uh, it's something that you can't just launch into a painting without thinking about the composition. Think about the composition. We're going to get into the details of the composition, but the composition becomes a very important part of, of the statement of the painting. And uh, I'm going to just go on here. Uh, a friend of mine, an uh, artist uh, I've known for many years named Brent Lynch, uh, likes to call himself the uh, out outlaw of composition. <laughs> he loves to do very extreme compositions, and it creates a lot of drama. You can see this is one of his uh, works. Uh, he, he likes to stretch the the typical composition into something unusual. And it's become a signature of his work. So when you endeavor to to do something different from what you see all the time, it become you become known for it. It becomes it becomes something that you can recognize. And I can recognize one of Brent's paintings in a magazine full of paintings of other people uh, a, a, in a moment because uh, of his approach to color and composition. So composition makes a makes a huge uh difference uh another influence of mine is an artist named maxfield Parrish, who uh you know played a lot with unusual composition and that became quite a a, a famous 
part of his work or well-known part of his work. So in terms of, of deciding how you're going to place uh, uh, an object or a, a subject on a canvas, uh, one of the famous uh, uh, um, uh, I'm not even sure what you call it, uh, um, uh, uh, rules is called uh, the Fibonacci curve, which is a mathematical formula that that creates this this spiral, and uh, and so in this it shows that the focal point wants to be off center uh, from from the um, uh, the the canvas. So you can play with that. You can actually download a, a transparent Fibonacci curve offline and you can overlay it uh, on the computer and and play around with the composition based on uh, Fibonacci uh, curve. So that's that's one thing you can play with. Uh, there's also another rule called the rule of thirds. So this is the rule of thirds and and it takes the canvas, whatever your proportion is, and breaks it down into three by three. And each one of these intersecting points here, here, and here, uh, they become areas where if you place the focal point, uh, it has a natural, uh, comfortable feel uh, for the composition. Um, uh, something that I kind of observed, I, I did a, a, a presentation on composition for a photography group. That's where these photographs came from. And uh, and I applied the rule of thirds and Fibonacci to, to the various photographs that they provided me. And, and I found that um, if you follow the rule of thirds or Fibonacci, uh, the, the entire image becomes a scene. Uh, it, the more you, the more centrally you locate your subject, uh, the more portrait-like the work becomes. If you offset the focal point, which is here, obviously, uh, if you offset the focal point, it becomes less about the subject and more about the scene. So you can make that determination when you're making a, a composition. The closer you take your focal point to the center, the more portrait-like it becomes. And so you can play with that uh, depending on what kind of expression you want. Do you want to focus on the, the subject or do you want to focus on the scene as a whole? So it's that's uh, something that you can play with, uh, which is like each one of these uh, elements of painting. Each one of these elements is an an opportunity, it's a tool, once you understand it, to manipulate. And you can control whatever it is, whether it's the rule of thirds or 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 whatever, you can control whatever element and, and uh, bend it to give you what you're trying to express. So rule of thirds, that's the rule of thirds. And here we have a, another photograph here. You can see I'm about to overlay there. I've overlaid the, the rule of thirds grid on that. And you can see the focal point. Whoops, there. Now, the, the reed. Uh, I call it the reed because I'm not really quite sure what to call it. Uh, but I know that it's something that I definitely pre-plan. And the more you can pre-plan uh, how you want the painting to go, the more you can visualize where you want it to go, it's like a map. Now you know where you're going. Now you know how to get there because you've already kind of thought this stuff out. It takes a lot of stress out of your mind uh, to, to preconceive as much as possible because there's enough to think about when you're painting. Uh, so if you can preconceive as much as possible and have these things worked out in advance, you can spend more time uh, concentrating on the quality of the work uh, and less time worrying about about these things that you should have already kind of had worked out. So here's a little thing that's a it's a bit of a um, it's a bit of a rule for me, but rules, by the way, are, are meant to be broken. 
sometimes the best paintings are when you break the rules that you have. So this is not really a rule. It's something that I kind of start with. And I, pr I prefer to create a composition most often that has the light coming from the top left. And uh, there's a reason for that. Uh, I, I think that most people, um, unless you're reading Japanese or whatever, most people read a read an image like they read a page of a book. So they stop at the tar start at the top left and work at the bottom right. And so by having the light at the top left corner, uh, you the light comes in so your eye hits only highlights as you're working through the painting. As you come in, your eye sees the highlights and it allows you to flow through the highlights and into the detail. So if you have it reversed where the, the light is coming from the top left, then when you read, the first thing your eye comes up against are the darks. And that's a, that's a wall that prevents your eye from moving through the painting. Not always, sometimes it's put, fun to play with that, but it's a thing you can control. Uh, so in this particular one, it's a very fairly stereotypical type of read for me. Comes in from the top. I've got this dark shape that channels the view. I've got a whole bunch of detail in here that draws the eye. Detail tends to attract the attention. So I bring the eye in here, comes down into the figure here, uh, get, has some time to play around, has some secondary focal points, and then it has this motion that takes it off the bottom right. I don't necessarily want it to run off the bottom right, which is why I have all these uh, these other secondary focal points. I want it to kind of flow through the focal point and then kind of have some other interesting stuff to catch the eye and maybe swing you back around and then coming into this other figure. So primary focal points and secondary focal points we're going to get into shortly, but but I like to plan that that flow of the painting and the overall read in advance. So that gives me uh, something to work towards. So on to the next, okay, here. This is from a demo. Uh, the reason that it's marked up is it's from a demo I did. So you see a few images like this, but um, in this particular painting, this is a photograph or actually a crop photograph of uh, my kid playing in a swimming pool in the backyard and uh, lots of nice bright colors and water and reflected color. So in this image again, top left um, uh, light source, you can see compositionally, I've got the face right on the edge of the page, which creates a certain amount of tension, which, uh, which uh, I like. Uh, so the focal point is not central. Uh, and, and, and so my idea is to come in and here's my focal point right here quite clearly. But I also want, I don't want the, the viewer to kind of blow past the focal point and right off the page. That That's not interesting. So I've got these secondary focal points so that I want the eye to come in and maybe kind of scoot past here. I've got some nice transparency effects to, to work on uh, where I've got cast shadows cast by these these spirals that are printed on the clear plastic that's casting shadows down on the the bottom layer. Getting the more you get to work with paint and and light, the more you start to understand what's happening with the light and and why things are happening. What's why is that that color and what you know why is that shadow that shape? Because you can see how the light is interacting with the with the objects. So in, in this case, I, I want the eye to kind of swing around here and come back to that focal point. Uh, so that was my thinking on, on this particular composition. And on to the next one. Another thing to, to preconceive uh, is proportion. And uh, I like to play with some extreme proportions and, and some extreme compositions too, but you know, the proportion of a work can add uh, quite a dramatic value. Uh, uh, this particular painting is, is six feet long and 18 inches tall. And it's it's about the uh, Canada Day Parade in Steveston, uh, seen from the point of view of my daughter who's sitting on the curb. And uh, 
so anyway I, I just quite like the the long horizontal feel for this and it gives me some good depth of feel i can keep the the soft focus of these random figures and and transitional areas that blend into the background and it really allows me to come in and focus on on this focal point and this character uh in the composition stage as a matter of fact this character walking in front this adult was well out in front and this girl was was in full view and i didn't want that because it really distracted from the focal point uh so i pushed this this main character back a little bit so that it obscures this this girl in the background and you wind up with the focal point on this girl here who was not very happy with us looking at her but it was really quite funny <laughs> so proportion is a good thing to uh uh to consider in advance sometimes an obscure or extreme proportion can really make a painting uh interesting and i think the next one here yeah same kind of thing here this is an example of a kind of a long horizontal uh, proportion that uh uh, again, uh, I quite like the, the feel of. And then I wanted to talk a little bit about diptychs, triptychs, multiple canvases. Uh, they can be fun, but I, I find that you need to have a reason for them. Uh, you can't just do a painting on apple pie, cut it in half and do it on, you know, either side. I mean, you can if you want to, but but I, I think that in order to have multiple canvases, there should be a reason for the multiple canvases now in this case here this was a commission for uh, a family who had two sons they were both baseball players and they're going off to college so they wanted this painting and i named it the boys of summer uh, in reference to don henley's song uh about baseball and uh and i wanted these two canvases because of the two sons and i even went to the point of of going to the house, finding where the painting was going to go. And then I, I actually did a, a rendering showing what the painting would look like on the wall uh, and uh, all that kind of thing. And so that I, I uh, led the person who was uh, commissioning the work through my train of thought. So there was no surprises because the worst thing with a commission is to surprise somebody with something that they're not expecting. Because even if it's great, if they weren't expecting it, they're gonna go, <clears throat> right? And and so uh, I found the commissions walking through the process, preliminary work, things like that. Here's a little uh, fun trick for you too. Actually, my dad used to do commissions, but he was always concerned that, that when he did a preliminary study, he used to do these little watercolor studies for his paintings, uh, he didn't want anyone to be specifically tied to one composition. So he did two or three compositions and he would send these compositions off to the client and the client would look at them. And, and the idea was that they would pick one and, and, and he would do the painting. Uh, but what happened most often was that the client couldn't decide. So they wound up buying three paintings or commissioning three paintings because they liked all three. So there's a little incentive for you to to put a little extra work in the preliminary uh, sketch process because that that can pay off. So anyway, with diptychs and triptychs and things, I like to uh, for it to mean something. Here's a a, a little uh, a diptych I did, and it's my daughter Sarah on the left and her friend you can't remember her name now uh, on the right. This was a long time ago, and uh, and this was at the um, Sanish Fair here in Victoria and, and had a back label that talks all about my experiences when I was a kid and first moved to Victoria and the first Sanish Fair that I went to and uh, and the, the eating of the corn and stuff. So it uh, the, the back labels become really quite personal for me. I, I, I quite like that. Scale of work is a, a, an important one to to consider. Uh, certain images at a large scale can have a lot more dramatic feel. Uh, so, you know, if you're doing the painting small or if you're doing the painting really large, it, it makes a, a, a significant difference to, to consider what size you want to paint something at. Don't just do it because you have a canvas that size. So, you know, that, think about that in advance. Um, 
substrate. This uh, this painting here is actually a, a postage stamp for Canada Post, uh, a series that they did called the Gates of Chinatown Gates Across Canada. And this is the, the gate of harmonious interest in Victoria. And uh, and I had to make sure that each person was obscure enough because of copyright and things like that. But uh, they wanted in watercolor. And I hadn't done watercolor in a long time, so <laughs> I wound up doing this one in a watercolor. But substrate, uh, canvases, uh, uh, panel, uh, aluminum, mylar, uh, every substrate has a different kind of feel. Uh, canvas uh, can vary dramatically depending on the duck of the canvas, which is the weave or the texture of the canvas. I prefer to work on canvas. I've, I've got some uh, images coming up here about how I prepare my canvases, but, but um, you know, think about what kind of substrate you want to work on. Uh, the smoother the substrate, the, the more detail is possible. Um, and there's lots of different variations. My sister Jennifer paints a lot on, uh, on mylar. And uh, and my sister Karen paints uh, quite a number of pieces on mylar as well, which is a very very smooth surface. So think about substrate um, before you jump right in and 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 start painting. Uh, base texture. Uh, I tend to like uh, uh, texture. Oh dear, I'm over time. Base texture. Uh, uh, so I tend to put uh, a heavy application of gesso. Uh, down over the canvas, uh, the the white canvas. I, I I trowel on gesso with a palette knife, and uh, and let that dry. Sometimes I put more texture on. Sometimes I put less. There's there's advantages and disadvantages to both. But uh, but I like the the feeling of the texture, and it it denotes that the work is an original piece, not a reproduction too. And that comes across in the very first viewing. So. There's no consideration that that it's a reproduction. It is undoubtedly an original. So that's as far as we're getting tonight uh, on this uh, this third video of uh, the elements of painting. Uh, thanks for uh, joining me. Let me just stop sharing here. Uh, hope you uh, hope you got something out of that. And uh, come and see uh, video number four, uh, which uh, will be the next in the series of uh, elements of painting. Uh, thanks for joining me.